this video I would like to talk a little bit about why to choose or not to choose for nature related religions, nature based religion. When mankind was still a young race we found ourselves in a world where most of the animals were better equipped to survive and also the environment was a big danger. We didn't have isolated houses and nice roof tiles, central heating systems. So the weather, drought, seasons, uh, the track of animals, all these were very essential for us to try to survive. And we, in a way, found also inspiration and identified with the world. We didn't see ourselves as humans from being separate of the world. We were not, that is the world and those are animals and we are humans like it is normal for a modern day man to think. We considered ourselves to be a part of them. We considered ourselves to be brothers and sisters to the stones, to the plants, to the animals. And we considered also the whole world in itself to be a group. So nature religions are about reconnecting to that group, reconnecting to the earth to the plants, to the stones, to the animals around us and forming a unity with it, feeling the flow of that planet and becoming part of the flow of the planet, contributing to the flow of that planet. So nature religions are very much about give and take, they're very cyclical in nature because as we all know seasons come and go and also um, the amount of predator and prey, they also follow multi-year cycles. And you're always chasing each other, you're always interlinked with your environment. And being interlinked, you know that sometimes you will move up, and sometimes you will move down, and other pieces will also be on a moving up or down. And to prevent yourself or each other from sinking down too much, you provide support to each other. But this is also very much an essential part of nature religions that you see all of the world around you, the material world, as something which requires your support but which also can give you its support. And of course in more primitive times this support was mainly in the form of a good harvest and food and uh, things like this. And nowadays we think more of support in yeah, forms of money, time, friends, influence, uh, good luck. Um, but ultimately it is the same. We're also asking the things around us to help us to achieve our goals. And these goals, they tend to be very practical goals. Like, um, I need a job. Um, I would like to have a nice relationship. Um, I would like to be healthy. And if these are your goals, the nature religion is very suitable for you. Because nature religion is ultimately a very practical religion. Just like every animal has its own niche, its own strategy to survive, I mean, the cunning of the fox, the strength of the bear, um, the stamina of the deer. So each animal has certain qualities and these qualities can help them to survive and thrive in the world. And nature religions are all about finding your qualities, finding your strength and allowing that strength to support you, to carry you forward on your path and also sharing your strength, sharing your capabilities with others then, so that others can, will also share their strength and their capabilities with you. So to talk about again this central division, whether you focus on yourself or focus on working with other beings around you. So if we look at the most um, yeah, self-supportive yeah, of these trends, <coughs> then we tend to go towards disciplines like um, working with herbs, herbal healing, uh, bug flowers, homeopathic medicine, uh, working with healing crystals, um, going to um, holy places, working with geomancy. Uh, so all of these are methods in a way to harvest the power 
of the nature around us, of the world around us, to make us support us, to serve our purpose, to elevate us to a higher position or station. So universally within this side of nature religions, self-discipline is very important. So there's always an element of challenge, of uh, putting yourself in the forest um, without food or water for days, or in a cave, or crossing a desert, climbing a mountain, and by in a way challenging yourself, by rising above yourself, new powers come forward. Because if your old powers are insufficient, new powers need to be found for you to survive, to move forward. And by creating artificially these challenges for you, you're in a way forcing your inner strength upwards. So often these religions where yeah, it's very much about self-sufficient, um, they arise in very harsh climates, in desert climates, in arctic climates, because there the environment is very challenging, the resources, the support you can, you can get from the nature around you is very little. So it very quickly becomes about you and developing yourself, developing your strength fundamentally without the aid or guidance of other beings. If you look at the more cooperative side of it, we find that this usually arises in environments which are less harsh. So uh, within North America especially, as a very rich nature-based religion also in South America, in Africa, we find these religions still, where basically the nature is seen as very rich, very bountiful, very supportive for you. And it's full of spirits who have um, their own qualities, but they also recognize the seeds of those qualities in you. And they in a way see you in a way you cannot see yourself. And they can by emulating these animals, by working together with them, you can share in their talents, in their powers, and by doing so, you can learn about your powers. So in a way, they're your guides. They've already perfected certain talents, while we, as humans, have many talents, but in a very diluted, confused form. And by choosing to work with one animal or plant, and then the next, we can sequentially perfect parts of our being. So we take teachers and ultimately when we're done with that teacher, we move on to a next stage. And ultimately we create an improved self, which is able to offer support more to others. So you could say the world is investing in us and hoping that that investment will be paid back with interest when we grow and mature that we can also guide our lesser brothers and sisters and heal them, support them, advise them when they come to us for help. So, if this appeals to you, then a nature-based religion would be very suitable to you. Um, there's of course the older nature-based religions, different forms of shamanism, there's of course the Celtic tradition, Druidism, and in its modern day you find Wicca and also other magical traditions, often including group magic, communal magic, circle magic, which is very focused on really using the power of the group to develop the power of the individual. So if these things appeal to you, this might be a good choice of religion to look for.